How do you know if you're lactose intolerance? That's what we're going to be answering in this episode of Ask Yuri. Ask Yuri, you've got a health and fitness question? I've got an answer. Hey guys, Yuri El Kame here. Today we're going to be answering a question from Milka, who wants to know about lactose, cheese, bloating, all that good stuff. So, again, longer question, I'm going to distill it for you here. Uh, so she talks about how um, she has cut out, so she's eliminated cheese, except cottage cheese and milk from her diet for about two years. And when she's on her cheat days, she grabs a piece of cheese, she gets really bloated and even burps a lot. Uh, so it feels horrible, doesn't mean that I am lactose intolerant. Also, white flour does the same thing to me. Is it that I'm gluten intolerant? I don't know. Well, um... Let's answer that. Okay, so first of all, with the lactose intolerance, um, there's a lot of things happening with, with respect to dairy. That's why I'm not a huge fan of it. So uh, first off, uh, how do you know if you're lactose intolerant? Well, one of the tail... Okay, so we have to d decipher what is intolerance. Intolerance is basically an inability to digest something. That is different from a sensitivity. That is different from an allergy. Okay, so those are three distinct categories. Intolerance means you cannot digest it. So lactose, we don't actually produce lactase, the enzyme, in the gut after about two years of age. So that's why we can't tolerate dairy for the most part. Even if you can tolerate lactose, let's say you're taking enzymes with it or whatever, there's still a casein protein, which is very problematic for a lot of people. So digestively, it's very tough for us to handle dairy. That's why you're better off moving to like sheep's milk or goat's milk or sheep's cheese, goat's cheese, stuff like that if you really need it. Um, is that an indication, like if you're feeling that bloatedness, is that an indication of the intolerance? It could be, right? It may not be, but it probably could be. Uh, again, the best way to kind of understand, to, to really feel that is moving to um, trying a lactase enzyme, seeing if that helps. If it does, then you probably know that it's a lactose issue, perhaps. Um, but the best thing really is just to avoid cheese and dairy altogether. I mean, it's, there's really no benefit other than the fact that so many of us are addicted to cheese and milk and all that stuff that we've grown up on. Believe me, I was there. I could have eaten cheese and toast for the rest of my life when I was in my teens. So I get it. Uh, the, the other problem too is that it also feeds yeast, fungus, all those bad stuff, all those bad things that we don't want in our body. Okay, the, the, the bad bacteria, the fungus, the molds, the yeast, all that stuff is proliferated when we eat a lot of cheese. Okay, because cheese, if you think about it, is essentially mold to some degree, okay? Uh, also, white flour does the same thing, so she gets um, bloated when she has white flour. Now, I'd be interested to see if she gets the same thing if she's eating whole wheat or nine grains or 12 grains or any kind of flour, any kind of bread for that matter, because if she's intolerant to gluten, again, intolerance is different from sensitivity, okay? If you're intolerant to gluten, you'll probably have celiac disease, in which case you'll probably project all vomits as soon as you have it, but if it's a sensitivity, there's a lot of different symptoms that can arise from gluten. It's, uh, gluten itself is related to 190 different autoimmune disorders. Why? Because gluten attacks the lining of the small intestine. And when that happens, we get what's called leaky gut. Stuff gets into the bloodstream, our body mounts an immune response, over time it goes haywire, and then eventually it attacks our hair, our, our hair follicles, our, our nervous system, whatever you want, okay? So that's just a very quick nutshell of how gluten destroys our body. If you're in, most likely, I would say that we're pretty much all to some level sensitive to gluten. Some of us are full-blown allergic to it if we have the HLA DQ gene. So you may want to get a genetic test to verify if that is what it is. Um, I, I mean, for the most part, I would say just don't even have bread. There's really no redeeming qualities of bread other than the fact that like with milk and like with cheese, it's something we've been brought up on, we're used to, we feel that we can't eat anything if we don't have any bread. That's really just, it's a paradigm shift, right? We just need to move away from the sandwiches mentality to other alternatives, okay? And again, believe me, I, bread is my weakness. It's like my kryptonite. So if you have a baguette sitting in front of me on a table, I will devour that, okay? So believe, I understand this stuff. Um, if, you're, if you're frustrated, I've been there as well. But there is a world beyond bread, and it's a much better world. It's a much healthier, much more energetic world. Um, some simple things you can do, you can look at some gluten-free breads. Uh, we actually thankfully just found out there's a bakery not too far from us that produces gluten-free baked goods. So they use like a bean flour, 
Uh, so uh, they'll use like bean flour. Some of their other flours will be based out of uh, potato starch. So there's a lot of cool things that, that are out there and they taste absolutely awesome. You, I mean, you won't even notice the difference in taste in most cases. Uh, just tons and tons of great stuff you can do without wheat, without gluten, okay? Um, so I would err to the side of, yes, there's probably some intolerances there or some, uh, or some sensitivities. And also, there could be some fungus and yeast issues, okay? If you're, if you're responding negatively to wheat, uh, cheese, maybe even wine, if you notice that, if you start getting symptoms like itchy crotch, itchy anus, I know this sounds really weird, those are all symptoms of candida and yeast issue, issues. Okay, it can manifest itself differently in different people, but understand that these foods feed those bad bacteria and yeast and molds and stuff like that. So we wanna limit those as much as possible and really seek out better alternatives. Uh, things like almond flour, coconut flour, again, the bean flour mixtures that I just mentioned, there's tons and tons of great recipes you can make with those. So it's just a matter of being a bit more resourceful and kind of doing the search on Google, or in, there's hundreds, hundreds if not thousands of books with recipes for that kind of stuff out there. So um, there we go, Milka. Hopefully that answers your question. And uh, remember, if you just remove that stuff out of your diet, as you know, you're probably gonna feel a ton better. So that's the best thing I could say. All right, uh, if you've got any questions, guys, you can join me on Facebook. The URL is below this video and uh, post your questions on the wall so I can answer them. Don't ask me a question in the personal messages because I've got hundreds of them that I haven't even looked at. So ask me on the wall so I can answer it there as well as create a video for you on YouTube so everyone else can benefit from the answer too. All right, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.